When they say it wasn't no witness done, when they say it wasn't no witnesses there, knowing that we were there, that was the thing that shocked me. Tonight, a Memphis pastor who was shot in the face outside of his church is setting the record straight. This week, a number of charges against the suspect in that case were dropped, and the DA's office blamed that on witnesses not showing up to court. But that pastor says he was there. Again, he was the one shot in the face, and now the DA's office is walking back their original statement. Fox 13's Jack Bill, you joins us live at 201 Poplar tonight. Jack, with all of these charges being dropped, is anything moving forward? Well, the only charge that suspect now faces that has any connection to what happened to Livingston is theft. And for that charge to move forward, it still has to go in front of a grand jury first. I don't let that thing disappoint me, uh, such as this. Uh, I feel like the judicial system, they do what they want to do anyway. In February, a group of thieves stole a Corvette outside Pastor Clemmy Livingston's church in Riverside. Livingston stepped outside while they were driving away, and one of them shot him in the face. He was left with life-threatening injuries and is still dealing with pain and facing the possibility of reconstructive surgery. It caused me to have severe pain in my head. I'm not able to eat like uh, normal people, and of course, my bone is still shattered down there. In the months since it happened, there's only been one arrest in the case, 18-year-old Rashunio Greer. He was picked up on an unrelated charge, and investigators claim they found pictures of him sitting in the stolen Corvette on his phone. He allegedly admitted to being present during the robbery and to driving the black Camaro that was caught on camera driving past the church when Livingston was shot, but he did not confess to shooting him. He faced two charges for that case, theft and aggravated robbery. But this week, that aggravated robbery charge was dropped, and the DA said it's because no witnesses were in court. But Livingston says that's not true. But that's why I immediately called John 13 to correct this because we were present. Keep in mind, we were subpoenaed. After Livingston reached out, Fox 13 circled back with the DA's office. In an updated statement, a spokesperson confirmed witnesses were present and said that while the aggravated robbery charge was dropped, the theft charge will go in front of a grand jury. Livingston says he's going to prey on the situation and hope that investigators can find the other people who were involved. Well, I'm sure that others will be brought in. If you, if you listen to the guy's stay, uh, statement, I, he, yes, he said he didn't do it. He said, but I was with them. The question is, who was the them? Now, the DA also confirmed to Fox 13 that several charges Greer faced in unrelated cases were dropped during those hearings because witnesses did not show up for those. Now, Livingston stressed that when it comes to Greer and the other suspects in this case, when they're in custody, he'd rather see them rehabilitated than just punished. Darcy? Well, that was Fox 13's Jack Bilyeu, live at 201 Poplar tonight. Thank you so much, Jack. You know, as Jack just mentioned, Greer admitted to driving the Camaro that was used during the car theft outside of Livingston's church. Days later, court records state that the same Camaro crashed after a police chase in East Memphis. Its driver, Derek Rawlings, faced several charges, but all charges were dropped due to lack of prosecution. None of the charges are related to the theft or the shooting that happened at Livingston's church. Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this pistol started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash, double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sensei, Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing and sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, life foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen. All right, and as you can see in this video, we got a pastor that basically, you know, got hit in the face. All right, and uh, you know, 
we, we say this all the time from our apostle and others, a great millstone on down to the document that teaches the likewise doctrine. The Lord is not playing about his name, man. All right, so let's go ahead and get this right here. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads, the subject says, all the tribes are guilty. Verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Shah has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. Right, so right there, that also cuts this bull crap about the Gentiles can be saved because, like we always say, the law, status, commandments, and the covenants, and the promises, and the service to the Most High Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah was only given to the Israelites. All right, the true biblical Hebrew is like the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. So that being the case, we are under the curses right now. These things will happen, and they'll only increase as long as Jake keeps sitting right here worshiping idols. And the main idol that the Christian church pushes and worships is that damn so-called uh, white boy Jesus, all right, that Edomite version of that Edomite Messiah, basically, all right, which is based on Serapis Christus, not the true Messiah, not the true Son of the Heavenly Father, according to the scriptures. And the Lord doesn't take idolatry lightly. That's the uh, that's the offense he hates the most. All right, that was that idolatry is a violation of the very first commandment we was given. All right, now let me go ahead down here. Amos chapter three verse six, and it reads: Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people will not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Shah have not done it? Surely the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Shah will do nothing but he revealed the secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Right. So the men of the Lord are constantly telling Jake to stop calling that false damn name Jesus Christ and then when stuff like this happens the message still goes over their head alright we don't have to know this pastor personally but we know Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah we know the Lord is not playing when it comes to these judgments man the Lord is not playing when it comes to his namesake because we profane his name among the heathen and how's one of those ways that we profane his name among the heathen going after their gods and right here in the midst of the heathen right here in Babylon the Great the worst captivity we've ever been in, the last captivity, and the only captivity where we've lost our heritage, Jake still doesn't inquire about the Lord. And Jake thinks that it's all the same. Oh, you know, Jesus is just a translation of Yahweh. No, it's not. It's a transliteration, and that's not the same. Your name, your birth name is your birth name. Like the beloved Elder Malcolm has said on multiple occasions, uh, proper nouns don't translate. And one example the Elder also gave is if, you, uh, if Kobe Bryant was playing basketball in Japan, the uh, people of the land, you know, the, the so-called Japanese people, which would be the children of Ammon, they would say everything in their language, and then they would say Kobe Bryant, and then they would go back to speaking their language. Simple. Just like when we, we're, we're raised in this captivity speaking English, Spanish, and these other languages, and Portuguese, and French, you know, because this is part of our punishment and our reproach. But when it comes to saying the Lord's true name, which is the name he was given, all right, by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and then also the name that the archangel Gabriel told his uh, his earthly father Joseph and his earthly mother Mary to give him, you say it in Hebrew, which is Yahweh Shah, because our Lord is a Hebrew Israelite from the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. But reading on, getting this real quick. <sighs> Jeremiah 23, verse 1, and it reads, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashmi al Shah. And woe means destruction. And even as far as that goes, this this pastor got he got let off with a warning by Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. All right, but this lets you know that the Lord is not playing, man. Verse two. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh Alahaya of Yasha Allah, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit you, so like I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. And that's terrifying because. Most Jake is too stupid to realize that's what this is. They too stupid to realize it's, it's an evil thing to teach the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, uh, the name of a false god. That's how far removed we are from our heritage and our customs, man. So, you may not see it as evil, but it is evil. So the Lord's going to have to visit you according to that evil. Idolatry is punishable by deletion, man. So even... Even by uh, the first covenant standards, the Lord is still giving you mercy despite how brutal that may seem. And this is all the more reason to fear the Lord and get right. You scattering his flock by teaching these false lies that the plantation uh, slave owners, the Edomites, all right, the so-called white man, the red Hebrew Edomite, the old serpent called the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of, have taught you to teach. And it's not all innocent and fun just because it's a bunch of niggas in a church 
tap dancing and stuff like that. The Lord can always send any evil angel or any deleting spirit that he wants to where you at if you're not doing right. In case Jake didn't learn from that Dylan Roof situation. But that's all I had. Just want to make this a quick epistle. Gotta get to the plantation. Hopefully, this was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rechak Wadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the others, and the sense of the Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bareness or serious citations, as always, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled bird among that number, which are the Hebrews, like foreigners. Among the heathen that look like the heathen. Kwame Asharala and Ababa Ball. We're almost out of here. Adawan Ratiza. And we got next. Adawan Ratiza. Shema, Yasha Allah, Yahawah, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawah, Achad. Shalom.